This is the first of a series of videos on how to use the automate feature in Pro for EPMA. So to access automate, you're going to hit this button, automate. That's going to bring up your automate window. And this is where, as the name implies, you can automate tasks in Pro for EPMA, such as uh, acquiring unknown or standard samples, peaking spectrometers, confirming positions, that sort of thing. So the first thing we want to do is decide what we're going after. So in this case, we could do unknowns, wave scans, or standards. We're going to pick standards. And this list is just a list of standard positions that are have been stored in a position database. And we're obviously not going to use all of those. So what we want to do is we want to hit this digitize positions. And that's going to bring up this dialog. And the nice thing about this when you're doing standards is after you've added standards to your sample setup, they're going to show up in this list. And when you click on them in this list, they just are automatically uh, selected over here. And that's a lot easier than trying to search through this big list of standards. So the first thing I like to do before I start picking any points for analysis is I like to confirm that my beam's in good shape and uh, close to where I think it is. So I'm going to go to a fluorescing sample. In this case, it's uh, Willamite right here. I've got a picture snap image of my stage. Uh, with my standard and my sample in it. Um, so I'm going to go to my Willamite standard and then we'll switch over to the view of the scope. And I'm going to turn on my light, get in good focus. And then I'm going to set it to the uh, analytical parameters that I'm going to be using, which in my case for spot analyses is maximum magnification and spot mode. And now I'm just going to check to confirm that that beam is near the center of my crosshairs. And in this case, probes well tuned and everything's in good shape. If it's not, if you have the skill set, you can change that and uh, adjust it yourself. Uh, but if you do have a situation where, for instance, the beam might be way off the center like it is at lower magnification on mine, you can just note this location. This is where you want to center up when you're going to be picking points. Otherwise, you'll be analyzing down here when you think you're analyzing up here. So that's just a tip to make sure you can get the most precise locations. Okay, so back to automate. So once we've picked our, decided to choose our standards, we've loaded them in in our sample setup, we can choose our location. So let's just go to, how about Wellastonite? So as you can see, when I select Wellastonite, it pulls up this list here. These are previous digitized positions that I picked for some other run, and they may or may not be accurate. In my case, I move my standards around a lot, so I can't trust that these locations are correct. And even if you have fixed standards, you're going to want to make sure to move them a little bit so you're not analyzing the same place over and over in your uh, standard. So the first thing I do is I want to get rid of these old uh, irrelevant positions. So if we click on this row right here, it'll select them all. You can also select individual rows. And if you right click, you get a bunch of options here. And in this case, we're going to delete selected positions, but you can also update. So I could update a single position if I changed it. Um, but in this case, I'm going to delete them. So I'm going to delete the selected positions. Now I don't have any positions in here and I want to add new ones. So now I'm going to navigate to my Willastonate standard, which is over here. I am then going to ensure that I'm in good focus. And I'm going to drive to a nice clear area on my standard, get it in good focus, backlash so that I have a uh, precise location. Uh, and notice it went out of focus a little bit there. So now I'm in good focus. And now I can return to the automate window and the digitize window. And here I'm just going to hit single point. And now it's added a single point with the XYZ coordinates uh, from the probe. Then I can move a little bit. And I can add another point and another point, and I can just keep adding as many as I would like. So that's the basic function for adding a single point uh, to the uh, position database, and that's stored. And in a later video, I'll show you how to, to actually run the samples and how to set the settings for your automate actions. You can also do the same thing for unknowns. So we can drive over here and Notice you do probably need to change this to unknowns. And in this case, <clears throat> I'm going to find a spot that I can analyze. On my sample, 
And here we have a feldspar with a plagioclase core and an alkali feldspar rim. So I can navigate somewhere that I want to analyze. Let's say I want to go here uh, where there's a little bit of zoning there. I then get in good focus. And just like with the standard samples, we're going to choose single point. And now I need to add that sample. Notice that I don't have any samples in here. So I want to name my sample. And then I can hit this add new unknown or hit enter. And it will add that to the list. Now note the little asterisk here. That is indicating that there's actually no position data. So we have it in our list, but we don't have any data for it. So until I add a sample position, so if I hit single point, it'll take the center of the stage. And now we have a sample position. I can also uh, do a variety of other uh, automation actions in order to pick samples. So notice linear traverse. So I can hit linear traverse. And this is just a warning that's saying you already have some position data. Uh, are you sure you want to proceed? So in this case, no. I'm going to say, no, I don't want to proceed. I'm going to right click and I'm going to delete selected position. And now I can do linear traverse. So I'm going to hit this. And I want to do a, a quarter rim, so I'm going to hit Update Start, and it selects my start position. And then I'm going to come back over to my scope. And I'm going to drive, and let's just do a little transect right here. So I'll get in position and check where it is on the actual OM scope, because the VSE might not be quite reliable because of the scan rate and any offsets that may be in it. So there's a good position there at the edge of the core. So now I can come back here and I can hit update stop. Now at this point, I can either choose the number of points or I can use a step size. So if I wanna do, let's say I wanna do 10 points on that quarter rim, I can just select 10 and it automatically counts the step size for me. Or I could do step size in microns and I could change this. Let's say I wanna do 100 micron step size it will say, okay, that's seven, and you have uh, 0.78 fractions, uh, uh, 0.78 step fractions, or 78 microns remaining. So you can choose how to do it either way you'd like. And we'll just do number of points per traverse, and we'll do seven. And now we can hit OK. And you can see that it automatically generated those positions. So now it's created a set of uh, transects and a straight line between those two points at the spacing you defined. So another way we can do this, we'll do demo two. Uh, and this is one that I really like because it, uh, though it takes a little bit of extra time, it saves a lot of spatial information for uh, the user, um, which the whole point of a microprobe is spatial context for your analyses. So we're gonna add demo two, and now we're gonna do digitize image. In this case, we get our scope lined up how we want to see it. Um, let's just do a similar deal here. And I've got this lined up pretty good. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. The higher the zoom you do this, the more accurate the digitizing will be. And we've got our image where we like it. Now make sure that you're in focus because it does rely on the Z to do what we're about to do. So let's get it in good focus. And now we're gonna come back to our digitize window and we're gonna hit digitize image. So we've got our new sample here, our new unknown, and we're going to hit digitize image. This is the imaging window that pops up. Set your settings here. I don't think we need that long of a count time. So we're gonna do 10 seconds. And we're going to hit Start Image. And notice that it already pulled the sample name from Automate when you hit the digitized image. So that's all going to be named properly. We're going to hit Start Image. And I like to maximize this just to improve my mouse resolution for picking points. And we're going to let it acquire an image. And then we will actually be able to pick points directly on this image. Okay, now that the image is loaded, uh, this is a, 
a symbol showing where the center of your uh, image is and we can just click so I want to analyze one of those and I'll analyze one of these and one of these maybe some of this stuff and you can just click and what's really neat about this is it actually the size of this circle is the size of the beam so it scales that spot for you so you can kind of see what your uh, beam size is and I can pick all of these points and now when I'm ready to go, I can hit save to database and that'll save my image and then just close it. And at this point, there's my list of points that I picked. OK, uh, so that's great. Later, I'll show you how to, you can export those images uh, with the sample locations on them, which is, a, again, a great record keeping uh, bit of information for your users. Uh, I'll show you the last couple here. Um, these are mostly self-explanatory. The shotgun is just going to pick a, a random number of points. So let's say I've got a sample uh, that's relatively homogeneous or at least uh, reasonably flat. And I want to just get a random sampling of what's on the surface of that sample. So I need to get a rough estimate for my size here. Um, so if that's my scale, which is kind of hard to see under there. That scale is about 9,000 microns, okay? So I'm going to do, let's say, one millimeter uh, random points. So let's add a new sample. So add new unknown. So now we have our third sample, and I'm going to do shotgun. So I can tell it I want 20 points, and the this is in microns. I want 20 points in a 1,000 micron area. And when I hit shotgun... It's going to digitize those positions. And there you can see the cluster of uh, randomly generated points. Uh, this is great for doing uh, heterogene heterogeneity uh, studies for, you know, something like maybe a glass or a standard or something. And you just want to get some random points all over the surface to see what kind of variation you'll see in your analyses. Rectangular grids, basically the same. So if we hit rectangular grid, uh, I'm just going to say yes, we don't need to create a new one. You can update your start and your stops for your corners and the grid size and steps just like a traverse but now it's going to generate a grid and polygonal grid you can set boundaries and actually draw a grid in a um, uh, irregular shape So that's the basics of picking points for analysis in the automate window.